Why, hello there. Hey, Brad. What's with the wind-blown hair that looks grizzled and slightly greasy? I'm glad you asked. This is what happens to your hair when you're waiting for the bus in Katrina-type winds. And that's the natural grime of the, the city. The natural sheen of the city, if you will. Oh yeah, and sweat. Yeah, today's been a really, really bad day and I'm gonna vent. But let's start with work. I'm just gonna be vague about work. I don't wanna get into specifics because that could land me in trouble. <laughs> let's just say the past two days at work have been horrible. Everybody's had those days, right? You're just like, ah, work was horrible. Well, yeah, last two days, nightmare fuel, right there. And to tell the rest of the story, let's go back. Let's go way back. Back to when I first got this fabulous apartment. In order for me to be approved to get this apartment, I had to clear up my credit. In order to clear up my credit, I needed money. Lots of money. In order to do that, I had to cash in my 401k. All of it. The first half of the 401k was actually a loan that I've been paying back weekly through my paychecks. It's been actually automatically deducted, so I figured, all right, that's groovy. The second half was called a hardship loan that allowed me to put down the deposit for the, uh, the apartment. The hardship loan I did not have to pay back, but I did have to pay taxes out the wazoo for it. So I figured, okay, good, I'm, I'm taken care of there. I won't have to pay whenever, you know, I do my taxes. So I filed my taxes, got my money, spent it like a fool. Then after that, I received this little form in the mail called a 1099-R form. I didn't know I was going to get this. I didn't know what the hell it was. So I had to contact H&R Block. I got this around... In January, when I filed my taxes, they told me that I would have to wait three weeks for the taxes to actually go through after I filed them for them to file an amendment. All right, so I handed them my 1099-R form. They said they would hold on to that for three weeks and get back to me. Three months later, yeah, I was calling, and they just never returned my phone calls. Finally, three months later, I called them, and somebody actually told me what had been happening, and that they never got around to doing my amendment. Thanks. So I thought, I also thought when I got the, the uh, 1099 R form, it showed the taxes that I paid, and then the amount of the loan, and then um, I thought that maybe I'd be getting a little bit more. Well, when they did the amendment, no, it didn't turn out that way. I have to pay taxes, yeah. Thanks. But they were so kind enough to waive the $40 fee for the amendment. Thanks, H&R Block. You're great. You're so generous. Then, today, um, I get a little note on my door for a late fee for my rent. I've been late before. They never brought it up. Actually, I've been later than what I am right now, and they never brought it up. I thought that it was fine as long as I paid it. All right. No, I think they're hurting. I don't think they're getting a lot of business, so they're going to go after those late fees. Matter of fact, they went after them so hard, they went back all the way to November and pulled a late fee from there. <laughs> so I have a late fee from November and this month. Thanks, guys. There's more money I have to pay. I figured today I would go get the amendment and pick it up and then make it in time for this advanced screening for a movie called Afterlife with Christina Ricci. I really wanted to see it. So my roommate actually got this. She said that she wouldn't be able to go, and April really doesn't like gory movies, and I don't think it's going to be that gory, but whatever. So I figured I'd go do the tax thing and hop on the bus that I could go see this movie in time at 7.30. No, no. Today was the day that life laughed at Brad. I went on dart.org to plot my my course and it said to take bus 400. 400 would be there at the bus station at 6 o'clock. You would leave there at 6 o'clock and then be there at the H&R Block location at 6.08. Figured walk in, walk out, catch another bus. I would have plenty of time to make it to the 7.30 showing. I did not know that there are two buses numbered 400 that go in opposite directions. It's a long road. In the middle of the road, there's the bus station. One 400 goes this way. One 400 goes this way. I needed to go that way. I got on the bus of 400, which I thought was, you know, the only 400. And it started going that way. I had to stop it, walk back to the station, catch the next 400 bus, which I thought for sure would be the 400 that went that way. No. Stopped it again. Just walk down the street to Beltline to where the next 400 bus stop would be that I know would be going that direction. 
and I picked it up there. That took me so long. I got there, and I had to wait and wait and wait and wait and wait and wait and wait. Finally, when they got to me, all I had to do was sign two pieces of paper and then take pick up my envelope. That was it. No consultation, no talking, no nothing. I had to go catch the bus, and there were dark clouds looming ahead, lots of lightning and thunder. It was about 8 o'clock by the time I got to the bus stop, and it's now 9.13. That's how long it took for the bus to get there and for me to get home. So, yeah, afterlife, yeah. What else happened today? Oh, yeah, as I was waiting for the bus to actually take me that way, um, this red car pulled up with four douches in it, each smoking a cigarette, each with the window down, hanging their little cigarette butts outside the window, smoking like douches do. And the bus pulled up behind them. He opened the door for me to get in. I went to go get in. They were like, hey, hey, sir, sir, sir. And they started pointing to the ground. Sir, sir. And I was like, usually I ignore people that I don't know that are speaking to me in public. But I figured, why not? I'll take a look. I thought that maybe I dropped something like uh, my advanced screening ticket. So I looked around and there was nothing there. They were like, sir, 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 sir adamantly pointing to the ground. So I walked over a little bit and I looked and there was nothing there. I walked back to the bus and I heard <laughs> These are grown ass men. These are grown ass men. Maybe mid 20s, early 30s, somewhere in there. Acting like total complete jackasses. You should not do that to people because you don't know what type of bad, horrible, despicable day that they've had. And you acting like a douche to them could make them snap and cause some serious damage to you or your car. Seriously. Don't do that to people. <laughs> Be kind to people because you seriously don't know what kind of person is out there that you're just going to push over the edge. It could be a sweet old lady and she starts hitting you with her handbag or umbrella or something and like bludgeons you to death. You could die being a douche. Seriously, that's my health warning to all you douches out there. So yeah, people suck. I just, ugh, oh my god. So now, I'm like broke. I'm like, like, not normal broke. I'm like super broke. I can't even afford ramen. I'm actually thinking of jacking some ramen from Walmart. How sad is that? So yeah, no more monster energy drinks in the morning. No more booze, which I seriously could use some right now. And in order for me to make up the late fees and paying on this, these taxes, I have to sell my prized possessions, the only two things that I have left that are worth selling. My Uber, Buffy, the Vampire Slayer DVD collection box, like with all seven seasons, and my Uber Angel box. I thought I was going to take those to the grave. Apparently I'm not. So I have to sell those. I have to sell my Sliders DVD box sets, my uh, collector's edition of Sweeney Todd that came with the hardcover book. The collector's edition of Sweeney Todd's soundtrack that came with a booklet. Yeah. I'm real bummed right now. Today really sucked. Bye.